Okay, so you hear about these attacks, but um, do you ever like stop and think about the how and the why behind them? Right. That's what we're doing today, you know, diving deep into these recent attacks on Israeli citizens in Amsterdam. We've got eyewitness accounts and expert analysis that suggests this goes way beyond just simple anti-Semitism. Yeah, what's so fascinating here is that these events, you know, they offer like a glimpse into these dark undercurrents of global politics. Disturbing, yes, but crucial for us to understand. Right. So let's kind of dissect what happened here and why it matters to you listening, even if you're miles away from Amsterdam. All right, so paint a picture for us. What exactly went down? So imagine this. You're in Amsterdam. You just enjoyed a European League football match, and suddenly you're targeted, not for anything you've done, but just for being Israeli. Why? The source describes these organized groups attacking these fans at, like, all these different locations all over the city. Oh, wow. Street assaults, people being thrown into rivers, families terrorized in their hotels, even passports were stolen and then, like, flaunted online as trophies. That's terrifying. It's yeah. like straight out of a nightmare. You're just trying to enjoy a game, and then, bam, you're facing this violence just because of your nationality. And the source goes even further. They draw this really chilling parallel to the early days of Nazi Germany, where Jews were targeted systematically. Right. This isn't just random violence. It seems calculated and organized. So where does the CCP fit into all of this? Because the source seems to be pointing a finger directly at them. Yeah, the source makes this bold claim alleging that the Chinese Communist Party is like the puppet master behind all of this chaos. Okay. They describe a specific type of organization. Uh, it's got like a Leninist structure, which relies really heavily on indoctrination and these covert operations. Mm. And they argue that this is like a CCP hallmark and a strategy they've used before. Hold on, Leninist structure. I think we need to break that down for our listeners. What does that even mean? It's definitely a complex organizational model, um, but essentially it's this hierarchical system with cells that operate independently, but they all ultimately answer to this central authority. It prioritizes secrecy, loyalty, and ruthless efficiency. I see. And the source is claiming that this is the same playbook used during the Chinese Revolution in Hong Kong during the anti-extradition protests, and even by groups like Hamas. So are they saying that the CCP is like directly controlling these groups that are carrying out attacks in Amsterdam? Well, the source doesn't explicitly state that, but they strongly suggest that these attacks are part of this broader strategy to destabilize Europe. Wow. And they claim that the CCP is a master at using these seemingly justified social movements to mask their true intentions. This is what gets really interesting. So you're saying these attacks might not be just about anti-Semitism, but are like part of this much larger geopolitical game. That's exactly what the source is suggesting. Okay. And if this is true, the implications are huge. OK, so let's unpack that. Right. If this is like a coordinated state backed effort to destabilize Europe. What are the consequences? I mean, why should someone listening in say Iowa care about this? Well, think about it this way. If seemingly grassroots movements can be manipulated by these foreign powers to just so chaos and division, it creates this sense of vulnerability everywhere. Right. It erodes trust in institutions, and it makes people just question everything. So this isn't just about Amsterdam or Israel anymore. This is about the potential for these tactics to be used anywhere in the world. Exactly. And the source argues that the CCP is particularly good at this kind of manipulation. They're masters of soft power, using propaganda and subtle influence to kind of shape narratives and achieve their goals without resorting to, you know, this overt military action. It's like a stealth attack on democracy itself. That's one way to put it. Right. And that's why understanding these tactics and recognizing this potential for manipulation is so crucial for everyone, not just the people directly affected by these attacks. This is starting to feel like something out of a spy thriller. Right. I'm already hooked. Yeah. So tell me more about how these so-called Leninist organizations actually operate. How do they go from an idea to actually carrying out something like we saw in Amsterdam? Well, that's where things get even more intriguing. The source goes into the inner workings of these groups and highlights their methods of recruitment and indoctrination and the psychological manipulation they use to control their members. All right, let's dive into that. We need to understand how these groups function if we're going to grasp the full scope of what's going on here. Absolutely. So the source emphasizes the importance of indoctrination and training. They claim that these groups are incredibly skilled at recruiting and brainwashing people, turning them into these loyal and obedient followers. Wow. And they start by attracting people with legitimate grievances or, you know, idealistic goals. And then they slowly introduce these more radical ideas and ideologies. Right. And they exploit existing anxieties or prejudices. So it's not just about funding or logistics. It's about shaping minds and manipulating people's beliefs. Precisely. They create an environment where dissent is impossible and loyalty is everything. 
They break down individuals and rebuild them into instruments of their agenda. That's disturbing. It makes you wonder how vulnerable any of us are to these types of manipulation tactics. That's a really good point. It raises this larger question about the power of propaganda and misinformation in our digital age. How can we tell the truth from lies when information itself is weaponized? It feels like we're stepping into this really complex and dangerous world. Hmm. You know, we're talking about shadowy organizations, covert operations, and the manipulation of information on a global scale. It's definitely not for the faint of heart. But understanding these tactics is crucial if we want to protect ourselves and our societies from these kinds of threats. This is heavy stuff. Yeah. Feels like we've only just scratched the surface of a much larger story here. We have. The source provides a lot to think about. And it's important to remember that this is just one perspective on a complex issue. We need to consider multiple viewpoints and do our own research before we form any conclusions. So what's the next layer of the onion we're peeling back here? What else does the source reveal about how these groups operate? So let's um, dig a little deeper into the actual mechanics of these Leninist organizations, as the source refers to them. One key aspect is their cellular structure, which is designed for secrecy and resilience. Okay, so like a terrorist sleeper cell that you see in a movie. Yeah. Where everyone has their specific role and they only connect through a chain of command. Exactly. It makes them really hard to infiltrate or disrupt. Even if authorities manage to arrest one member, they often don't know anything about the bigger picture or the other cells. It's kind of like cutting off one head of a hydra, another one just grows back. That's terrifying. So how do they recruit and train people to become part of these covert networks? networks. The source mentioned brainwashing. What does that actually look like? The source emphasizes that it's this gradual process of indoctrination. It often starts with these seemingly harmless social or political groups that attract people who have like legitimate grievances or, you know, idealistic goals. Right. Then they slowly introduce more radical ideas and ideologies. They exploit anxieties or prejudices that are already there. So it's kind of like a slow burn. They don't just come right out and reveal their true intentions up front. They lure people in with promises of change or belonging. Exactly. The source compares it to boiling a frog slowly. Mm. If you throw a frog into boiling water, it jumps right out. But if you put it in lukewarm water and slowly increase the heat, it doesn't realize the danger until it's too late. Wow. That's a chilling analogy. Yeah. So how do they convince people to actually commit acts of violence? The source mentioned that these groups operate like cults. Right. The source highlights that they use a lot of psychological manipulation techniques, things like isolation, peer pressure, and even threats of violence against those who question the group's ideology or try to leave. They create this whole environment where dissent is impossible and loyalty is paramount. It sounds like they prey on vulnerable people, people who are disillusioned or marginalized or maybe seeking a sense of purpose. Absolutely. The source argues that these groups offer this distorted sense of belonging and empowerment, especially to people who feel alienated from mainstream society. They offer this seductive narrative of us versus them, where violence is justified as a means to achieve this greater good. That's heavy stuff. <laughs> so let's bring it back to the attacks in Amsterdam. Yeah. How do these Leninist groups on the ground connect to the CCP, who were supposedly pulling the strings from afar. Well, the source alleges that the CCP provides training and support to these groups all over the world. They're exploiting their structure and tactics to advance their own geopolitical goals. But what would the CCP gain from inciting violence in Amsterdam? How does that serve their interests? The source suggests that the CCP wants to destabilize Western democracies and weaken their alliances. Right. By fostering chaos and division, they can erode public trust in institutions and create opportunities to expand their own influence. So they're using these groups as proxies to sow discord and undermine their rivals without getting directly involved. That's the theory. The source argues that the CCP is playing this long game, right. strategically manipulating global events to shift the balance of power in their favor. This is sounding more and more like a spy thriller every minute. It's a pretty bold claim to make. The source makes it sound like the CCP is some kind of master puppeteer pulling the strings behind the scenes. It's definitely a provocative perspective. And while the source doesn't provide concrete evidence to back up these claims, it does raise important questions about the nature of modern warfare and the growing influence of these non-state actors. Okay, so we've been talking a lot about the potential dangers of these Leninist organizations and the CCP's supposed involvement. But what about the individuals who carry out these attacks? What motivates them? Are they just brainwashed puppets or is there more to it? Well, the source 
sheds some light on the mindset of these individuals. It highlights the complex interplay of ideology, personal grievances, and psychological manipulation. So it's not as simple as saying they're all just evil or crazy. There are deeper factors at play. Exactly. The source suggests that many of these individuals have been indoctrinated into a belief system that justifies violence as a necessary means to achieve this righteous goal. They've been convinced that they're fighting for a cause that's bigger than themselves, even if it means harming innocent people. That's disturbing to think about, that people can be manipulated into committing such horrific acts. Mm -hmm. What stands out to you as the most effective way these groups manipulate people? The source points out that these groups are really good at exploiting these existing social and political divisions. Oh. They use subtle forms of propaganda and misinformation to further their agendas. They often present themselves as like champions of social justice or defenders of marginalized groups, mm -hmm. you know, masking their true intentions. So they're using legitimate concerns as a cover for their sinister activities. Exactly. They prey on people's fears, anxieties, and sense of injustice to recruit followers and justify their actions. It's a lot like how disinformation spreads online. You know, it preys on existing anxieties and plays on people's emotions. That's true. Yeah. It makes it so difficult to tell genuine activism from these manipulated movements, mm -hmm. especially in the age of social media. It's a challenge we all face in the digital age. Mm -hmm. We're just bombarded with information from all sides, and it's hard to know what to believe. Mm -hmm. It's more important now than ever to cultivate critical thinking skills and to be aware of the potential for manipulation. So how do we do that? How yeah. do we arm ourselves against this kind of information warfare? The source argues that the first line of defense is awareness. Like we need to be aware of the potential for manipulation and question the information we consume and try to seek out different perspectives. So it's all about critical thinking. Yeah. Don't just believe everything you read or hear, especially online. Exactly. Do your own research. Cross check yeah. information. Be wary of, you know, emotionally charged rhetoric or these overly simplistic narratives. Right. Think about who's presenting the information and what their agenda might be. Are they appealing to your emotions or presenting a balanced perspective? Sounds like we also need to be more aware of what's happening in the world. Yeah. You know, not just in our own backyards. Absolutely. Global events are so interconnected now. What happens in one part of the world can have repercussions elsewhere. So if we're going to be responsible citizens, we need to stay informed about global affairs and try to understand how they might impact us. Okay, so let's say I'm doing my best to be a critical thinker and stay informed. Mm -hmm. But this all still feels pretty overwhelming. What can I, as just one person, actually do to counter this kind of sophisticated manipulation? Well, the source suggests focusing on building resilience within our own communities and institutions. Okay. So, you know, strengthening social bonds, promoting open dialogue, and supporting a free and independent press. So it's about coming together as a society and resisting the forces that try to divide us. Exactly. We need to be wary of those who promote hatred and distrust. We need to hold our leaders accountable and demand transparency. Right. And we need to support organizations that are working to combat misinformation and promote critical thinking. It sounds like a tall order. But I guess the alternative is pretty bleak if we just let these tactics continue unchecked. Yeah. The source paints a pretty grim picture of what the future could look like if we fail to recognize and counter these threats. They argue that we could see a world where democracy is eroded, trust is shattered, and conflict just becomes the norm. Wow, this has been a real eye-opener. Yeah. You know, we went from this disturbing attack in Amsterdam to uncovering this potential web of global manipulation and intrigue. Yeah. It's kind of amazing how one source can lead to so many thought-provoking questions. And that's the beauty of a deep dive, oh. you know? It's about taking the time to really explore a topic, to challenge our assumptions and consider different perspectives. Even if we don't have all the answers, it's important to keep asking questions and to keep learning. Absolutely. We've explored some pretty serious allegations against the CCP today, mm -hmm. but as always, we encourage you to do your own research and form your own conclusions. Don't just take our word for it. And as you continue to explore this topic, here's a final thought to consider. In a world where information itself can be weaponized, how do we equip ourselves to navigate this increasingly complex and challenging landscape? How do we stay informed without becoming overwhelmed or, you know, falling prey to manipulation? Those are definitely questions worth pondering. Yeah. And with that, we'll wrap up this deep dive. We hope this has given you some valuable insights and maybe a little bit of a wake-up call. Stay curious, stay informed, and stay engaged. Because the future of our world depends on it.